Hey everybody, welcome to Mana Moments. So this week we're going to be looking at a verse that is just one of my all-time favorites. It's Isaiah 41.10, and if this verse was a physical food, it would be one of those superfoods that is fortifying and packed full of nutrients, but that tastes like chocolate lava molten cake with bluebell vanilla ice cream melting over it. Uh, or whatever your dessert of choice is. It's, it's a verse that is so nutritious, but is absolutely delicious. So it's Isaiah 41.10. And just for the context, if you go back to the book of Isaiah, for the first 30-something chapters, God has been confronting his people. And he's had some hard things to say to them. You know, he has confronted them about their sin. They have rebelled against him. And he's let them know that sin has consequences. And they're going to be conquered by their enemy and they're going to be taken into captivity. But when we get to the Isaiah 40s, the tone changes and God begins to comfort his people. And he reminds them that exile is not the end of their story. He is still their God. They are still his people. He still has good plans for them. And he begins to make promises to them. And this verse is one of those promises. So Isaiah 41.10, God says this. He says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. Like if, This is one of those verses that if we could just embrace it and trust it and walk in it, it would totally transform our lives. Like God says two I am's and three I will's in this verse that are incredible. So let's just start with the I am's. God is reminding his people, he says, I am your God. Like not some lifeless, worthless, puny, powerless idol. I am your God, the living God, the God who gives you life, the God who gives everything around you life, the God who created and sustains everything that exists. That's who I am and I am your God and I am with you. God pledges his presence with his people. And that was good news for God's people in the past, but it is even better news for us. And when I say God pledges his presence, like um, there's a sense in which like the reality of God's presence is everywhere. God says heaven and earth can't contain him. He's that immense. But God pledges his relational presence with his people. He's that intimate. And in the Old Testament, that was tied to a place, right? God, God pledged his presence to the temple. And if you wanted to go and worship or pray, you couldn't just show up any old way. Like you had to go and have the priest offer sacrifices for you. Like they would shed the blood of bulls and goats to atone for your sin, to acknowledge that God is holy and that you are sinful. And so you had to deal with your sin and go to the temple to be in God's presence. Well, we in the New Covenant, God has sent His Son to atone for our sin once and for all. Like He shed His blood as a one and done sacrifice. So that when we turn and we put our trust in Jesus, every single bit of our sin has been dealt with. Jesus takes all of our sin, past, present, future, upon Himself, and gives us all of His righteousness. So we can now go to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. And what is equally as beautiful is that now God doesn't pledge his presence to a physical place. He says, we are the temple. And so his promise to us isn't just, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to actually be within you. The fullness of God takes up residence in us. That is um, a mind-boggling truth. And what's wonderful is when, when we have turned him and reconciled to God and he takes up residence in us, it's not like he's just sort of along for the ride now. He's not a, a passive spectator, aloof, uninvolved. This God who is with us is for us. And listen again to these three I wills, he says. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. 
I will, not I once did, not I might do, but I will. It's an ongoing promise. I will today, I will tomorrow, I will 10 years from now. I will tell your dying breath, I am with you, I will help you. And so we wanna take that truth and we don't want it to be just some like theoretical, theological idea that we talk about. We want that to be a reality that we just massage into the circumstances that we're facing. I mean, pick any struggle that you are walking through, any difficulty, and think about the difference it would make to be walking as if that verse is true, as if God is in us and with us and helping us. Um, because it is true. Just off the top of my head, like imagine parenting with that perspective, because that's a difficult task, whether you've got toddlers or teenagers or young adults. Uh, if you're a parent, there's got to be times where you sometimes think, I am exhausted. I don't know what to do. I need help. And if we step back and remember that God dwells in me, the wisdom of God is with me, the strength that raised Jesus from the dead is in me, the love that put on flesh and died in my place is with me, that will make all the difference. So I don't usually give homework, but I'm just going to strongly encourage you, please take the time to store this verse up. Memorize it. Marinate in it. Begin to ask God to help you apply it to the circumstances that you're walking through. I promise you that it will make a difference. So I think that is it for this week. Until next time, may God turn our hearts away from worthless idols. And may he turn our hearts toward him so that we live our lives, we walk out our everyday moments in confident dependence on him.